I should have just Ubered. I'm going to a conference that I'm so excited about right now. It is a women in social justice conference at Fuller Theological Seminary and I absolutely can't wait but there's not a lot of parking. <laughs> I just saw some nuns walking which makes me really excited. I don't know if they are heading to the same place that I am. I don't even know what building I'm going to. I am the worst about getting to conferences like on time and knowing where to park and knowing where to go but I had to clean up the house a little bit this morning because my mother-in-law came over to watch Jensen and then I had to like explain his food and all of that so oh, it's just so hard to get out of the house on time ever when you're in charge of everything in the house you know mamas you feel me After this and I just wanted to check in with you guys and uh, talk about some of the things that we've learned so far one of my favorite favorite things is sitting under women women preachers women speakers especially women of color I just love the authority that they bring I love the perspective that they bring honestly any time that I have a chance to do this I do whatever I need to do to make it happen. So it wasn't easy to get here today. And some of the speakers talked about that, how when you are raising kids and you're in that stage of life, uh, it's just different and you can't always take advantage of every opportunity. But um, some of the things that I just wanted to share that, that I learned, none of these are my ideas obviously, but um, we heard a speaker by the name of Alexia Salvatierra and she talked about centering the marginalized and she shared a verse that totally transformed the way that I read it and this will transform the way that I see like work in the church forever. Yeah, my arm is getting tired. Um, but she was talking about the passage in 1 Corinthians 12, 22 that talks about the body. Let's see, let me, let me get it on my phone here. <laughs> Okay, so if we back up and we just look at like the common verse that so many people know, for just as the body is one and has many members and all of the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. And if I skip a couple verses and go down to verse 22, it says, on the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. And she spoke about the parts of the body that suffer more, we are supposed to give greater honor to, we are supposed to give greater care to. If you are otherwise healthy, but you have uh, a, a chest cold, you are going to treat that chest cold and you're not going to be giving as much attention to your feet at that time or your hands. You are going to pay attention to the part of your body that is in pain. She brought in like the Me Too movement and how the Me Too movement is mostly centered on women who have been abused by like these men in, in positions of power, these very successful men. But she talked about a friend of hers who's part of the hotel workers movement in Long Beach right now fighting to get panic buttons in hotel rooms. And these women are marginalized by men who are unnamed, just unnamed customers, people who don't necessarily have a lot of power and privilege, but what if her story was the center of the Me Too movement? It would be very different. So it was just something interesting to think about. Next there were a panel of speakers and it was so great to hear like just this diverse panel of, of women speakers and they were Sandra Maria Von Opstahl, Kathy Kang, Vicky Reddy, Akemeni Uwan and Dr. Alma Zaragoza Petty. 
Sorry, my hand is getting tired. I didn't <laughs> bring a tripod. I keep moving you around, but um, it was just amazing to hear about their journeys through academia, through the publishing world, in the church as pastors and as speakers and as you know, people who present at conferences and, and write books. Kathy Kang is hilarious. She is one of my new favorite people. The funny thing is I have been following most of these women on Instagram already. So that's what I love about the power, power of social media and people who, you know, aren't always getting publishing deals or, you know, getting the fame that we traditionally give to certain groups of people. They can amass a following on social media and I can find out about them through that. So anyway, it was just cool to see these people who I followed on Instagram speak in person. Kathy King was hilarious and she was just talking about how if you go to a Christian bookstore and buy a book by a white woman about like raising children, you know, somebody who wrote this book in their 20s, like that is seen as like a, a common story for us all to learn from. But Kathy Kang, who's Asian, her story would be niche. And once they publish something by her, a publishing company feels like they don't need to, to publish other voices of women of color. And so she was just saying like, it's interesting how God called so many white women to write books about raising children. You know, certainly he's called other women to do that. And they're just not always given the avenues to publish or to meet agents and, and things like that. So it was just really interesting to hear all of them talk. I didn't come with anybody that I know. So, which is fine. I, this is my general life. I have an interest in something and whether or not other people are interested, I just come anyway. So I don't mind coming to these kinds of things on my own. Plus it was kind of nice to have this time to just sit and reflect and talk to you while it's fresh in my mind. But I am hungry, so I think I'm going to run and try and find some food around here and then I don't want to be late coming back. So I do have a few other, other thoughts about things that I should be doing on my end in my life. So, uh, let me get some food and maybe like a better place to put my camera because my arm is getting tired. Such an amazing conference, so, so good. Um, my mother-in-law is watching Jensen, thankfully. So nice that she can come out sometimes and watch him. I came away with this book called Still Evangelical, Insiders Reconsider Political, Social, and Theological Meaning. I think this is like right where I am right now. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I also ordered two books on Amazon while I was sitting in sessions today so I've got a lot of reading to do um, a couple months ago actually I picked up a few books on Amazon uh, that were just theology books by people of color and by women and for so long because um, you might not know but I went to a Christian college for the first year of college I also went to Bible college um, and I grew up in the church so I've read lots and lots and lots of theology that was uh, it, it's something I'm well versed and well studied in, but I had read white men like you read Matthew Henry or whatever So um, yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to reading stuff like this It's really bright out here. My mother-in-law wants uh, some guacamole and Pepsi and that sounds great to me So I'm gonna go pick it up for her 